Hello everybody, yes, uh, we're still in the mess because we're refurbishing labs, teaching has started, we're almost there. I don't know if it's just us, but I feel that there are a couple of arteries in the thorax that we talk about but don't get properly introduced and I want to link, I just want to link them up pretty much for my own benefit as much as anybody else's, a bit my, my, like my vlogs really. Um, there are two thoracic arteries, the internal thoracic artery and the lateral thoracic artery. Used to be called the internal mammary artery and the external mammary artery. Already putting those two words together is helping me understand their naming because we talk about the internal mammary artery a little bit and you think, well, is there, why is it called the internal thoracic artery? Where's the external thoracic artery? And so on. Anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Um, so the first bit will be, I'm, gonna, I'm going back to pipe cleaners. I haven't looked at these models yet, but I think I'm gonna to have to build them. We'll show where these arteries come from, where they go, what branches they have and what they do. And if that's enough for you, then you can stop there. And then the last bit is we'll talk about the collateral circulation that forms as a result. Okay then, uh, we're gonna to have to strip you down a bit, aren't we? So, the um, the aorta comes out of the heart. Yeah, really, we're starting there. Um, yoink. <laughs> Where's your heart? Right, sub you in later. Maybe it's gone back for repair or something. A broken heart, eh? Right. You've got a heart, good. I told you we were in a bit of disarray. Okay, here's the heart, here's the aorta ascending from the heart and it arches over posteriorly and to the left and then descends through the, the thorax. Really important artery, sends blood all around the body. Um, now, on the right hand side, we can see a branch up here which is passing to the right and that's the brachiocephalic trunk and it gives off this common carotid artery here but this is the subclavian artery and the subclavian artery is going to supply blood to the upper limb. On the left we see the common carotid artery coming directly from the arch of the aorta whoop, off to the head and then we see the left subclavian artery coming from the arch of the aorta and going look, across here to the upper limb. So the subclavian artery is running from these two positions, it's different on either side, and then as they run towards the first rib, they give off the internal thoracic artery. Um, so that's where it comes from. Um, when the subclavian artery passes the first rib, we change its name to the auxiliary artery. So the internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery is an early branch of the subclavian artery on either side. And it's gonna run inferiorly, but it's gonna run deep to the thoracic cage. So there'll be one on either side, and they're going to run deep to the clavicle and deep to the costal cartilages on either side, running down either side of the sternum. So you can see why these two are called the internal thoracic arteries. They're deep to the ribs, they're deep to the thoracic cage. Um, and they're both descending, and as they descend, they're gonna give off intercostal branches. So there are arteries running between the ribs, around the ribs, and these are the intercostal arteries. Now, we talk about intercostal arteries, but actually there are anterior and posterior intercostal arteries. So as the internal thoracic arteries descend, they give off the first six anterior intercostal arteries directly in between the ribs. These will run around the rib cage and they'll meet the posterior intercostal arteries which are actually branches from the aorta. So there's anastomoses there between those. Now, the other thing that's here, particularly in the female thorax, is the breast. And the internal thoracic artery gives off perforating branches through these gaps here to supply blood to the medial breast. So that's why these arteries used to be called the internal mammary arteries. The internal thoracic artery um, ends by splitting into two other arteries 
the superior epigastric artery and the musculophrenic artery. Hey, this is why pipe cleaners are so good. Uh, epigastric, well, gaster refers to the, the belly. So epigastric means upon the belly. So this artery that starts up in the neck continues down. So this would be the, whoa, come here. This here would be the superior epigastric artery is gonna continue down into the anterior abdominal wall and supply blood to that. It's gonna anastomose with the inferior epigastric artery, which is coming up inferiorly. That's a branch of the external iliac arteries. And this here then, this would be the musculophrenic artery. Musculophrenic? Phrenic diaphragm. So the musculophrenic artery, as that continues to descend, so it's descending kind of out this away. I'm just pulling it down there so you can see it, but it's going out. <laughs> you get, yeah, it's going out this away. It's going to run to the diaphragm. It's going to supply blood to the diaphragm, and it's going to give off anterior intercostal branches seven, eight, and nine as it goes past. So that's the internal thoracic artery. So the thing that bugs me is that the internal thoracic artery is clearly a big part of the thorax, you know, it's giving off a lot of blood vessels, it's got a big job to do. But we talk about the internal thoracic artery or the internal mammary artery, and we just kind of leave it as that. It's like, and what bugs me is, there must be another mammary artery or another thoracic artery, right? And what we find is that, excuse me, uh, all right, here is the subclavian artery, and as it passes the first rib, as I said, we call it the axillary artery because it's running through the axilla, it's running through the armpit. And from the axillary artery, there is an artery, there's a branch called the lateral thoracic artery. Oh, feels good to put those two together. And this also used to be called the external mammary artery. That feels so much better. Yeah, there's an internal and an external mammary artery. So lateral thoracic artery is a more sensible name, but it's a branch of the axillary artery. Did we talk about it when we did the branch of the axillary artery? Must have done. Probably did it in isolation. Do you see what I mean? Did, just did it on it. Anyway. And it runs down the lateral thorax. So up here we've got pectoralis minor, pectoralis major, and again the breast. So this artery running in this direction will find This is why I wanted to use this model, but it'd be helpful if you had a heart and an aorta. This muscle here is serratus anterior, so it's... Oh, have I got, no, I haven't got pectoralis minor on here. So it, it's running kind of under pectoralis minor to get to serratus anterior out here. It's also then going to supply blood to pectoralis major, and of course the breast is here, uh, so it's also going to supply blood to the lateral breast. Hence why this is the external mammary artery. Can you see how this is outside the thorax and it's going to the breast? And the other artery was the internal mammary artery because it was deep to the ribs. It's nice, isn't it, when you put it all together? So that is now called the lateral thoracic artery because it's lateral in the thorax. Right, here's a cool bit of anatomy. Um, this is the heart, not his heart. Um, but the aorta, as we saw, arches around here, and the aorta carries all the blood to the thorax, the abdomen, the pelvis, the lower limbs, and it can become narrowed. This is coarctation of the aorta. Often gets narrowed in the arch around this sort of region here. Um, and that would be a bad thing because you can't get enough blood through the aorta to supply blood to the thorax, the abdomen, the lower limbs, which uses a lot of blood. Now what happens is, now we know about the internal thoracic artery, we can have a little think about this. So if the blood struggles to pass around the arch of the aorta, it still finds it very easy to pass at the brachiocephalic trunk on the left subclavian to get out into the internal thoracic arteries. And of course, the internal thoracic arteries, as they descend, they're giving off anterior intercostal arteries, which are meeting the posterior intercostal arteries. And the posterior intercostal arteries are all coming off the thoracic aorta, which means that there's a collateral circulation. So the blood, to avoid this narrowing here, 
could go up to the subclavian artery, out through the internal thoracic artery, into the anterior intercostal arteries, through the posterior intercostal arteries and around, and then back into the descending thoracic aorta and then on to the rest of the body. And those arteries can actually adapt to increase that uh, change in blood flow, that increase in blood flow, and the blood is actually flowing in a different direction then, because instead of the two intercostal arteries flowing like this, it's, just, it's going to be flowing like this. Isn't that funky? There we go, a description of the internal thoracic artery and the lateral thoracic artery. Kind of a named pair, but not really. So you may well come across um, uh, surgeons or people who trained a while ago uh, who call these the internal and external mammary arteries. You've got to use those, you kind of got to remember those terms interchangeably so you know what people are talking about when they come up. Right, see you guys next week.